Thank you for tuning in to this 60 second video that I believe is the most important part of the home buying process. Selecting the right realtor for you and for your transaction, which could be in excess of a million dollars or more. Like why not select the most experienced individual to represent you and your family in this transaction? It amazes me that people go out and the realtor that they're using, and I only know this because I work with a lot of sellers as well as working with buyers. And when I have a seller who's receiving offers from several different realtors, I have the opportunity to interact with all these agents and see how they operate. And I can tell immediately the ones that have been in the business, or at least if they're new, have the guidance that they need or a mentor that's gonna help them through the transaction. I just wanna leave you with this. Why not have an individual who already knows and has been through the process, who knows what to look out for and how to lead you into the end zone, how to lead you to the promised land, how to punch it in, as we say. How is a new agent gonna know what to look out for, how to interact with the lender, the escrow company, the title company, the inspector, the appraiser, the termite company, and negotiate with all these facets of a transaction if they haven't done it before? Man, go with the individual who has swung that club over a thousand times. I'm Mark Schwartz, and I wanna help you get it done. Good evening and welcome back to The Real Deal. I am Mark Schwartz and we have a great show lined up for you this evening. Tonight, Captain Joe Amador from the San Diego Fire Department coming to us and talking about fire safety, earthquake safety, and what to have in your house to be prepared. Also, the mortgage geek, our buddy Sean Cahan talking about mortgage interest rates and what you can do to get into that house that you want to get into as well as having some fun with a music video. Finally, we have Mike from SoCal Flooring and Carpet coming in to talk about the benefits of having new carpet and flooring in the house you're thinking of selling or stay out of the result and get in the house you want to and then get the carpet and flooring that you want and make that house yours. Finally, as usual, we have an aspiring artist segment at the end, which will be a video and song from an aspiring musician. And this week we have the Illuminati Hotties. Let's jump right into it with Mike from SoCal Flooring and Carpet. Hi, I'm Mike Panettieri, owner of SoCal Flooring, and we're in my beautiful showroom down here in Chula Vista. We sell all kinds of flooring. We sell carpet, tile, wood, laminate, LVP, and we also uh, service installation also. We're waiting for you guys to come down and give you a good deal and give you some good pricing on some flooring. Wow, what a great showroom. Let's check in with Mike from SoCal Flooring now and talk about the benefits of flooring and carpet in your home. Awesome. We're here with Mike Panettieri, the owner of SoCal Flooring and Carpet, one of my good friends, and we've been working together for 20 years. I mean, talk about a relationship-based relationship, as they say. Dude's been helping me out with carpet and paint on rental property, flip properties, and primary residences. And man, I wanted to get you in here, and I just love what you do and how you do it. That personality, you and I are bros, <laughs> it's great. But they, like, how many times you know, do you get called over to a house uh, to, you know, people are considering putting carpet and flooring in, like, hey, we're thinking about selling the house, house and we're trying to right, make that decision. Right. Carpet and flooring look like, you know, somebody died, right? And right. you're over here going, man, you got to do it. Like, yeah. what does people, it take to get these guys over well, the hump? you know what? People um, don't understand when um, they're trying to sell the house, it's just a little bit of a facelift will um, get you, go a long way for yeah. you. It'll uh, make the house look so much better. Um, it makes the pe people come in and feel... Uh, more appealing yeah. to see to sell the home. And well, dude, you've been doing this. You've been doing Rancho Santa Fe homes, Del Mar yes. homes, down to Chula Vista. I know, and, and you got longevity in the business, and that, that's yeah. obviously you know great. You know, you do good work. But much like we're talking about, dude, I'll go on a listing appointment. Somebody wants to sell their house. I mm -hmm. walk up, and it's like they didn't pressure wash the house. You know, plants are dying. The grass is dead. <laughs> You're like. Whoa. Like, okay, like, and they're asking you, what do you think we need to do, you know, to sell the house? Like, hey, turn on the water, you know, I, I understand. So, like, you want to walk into the house, you want to make it look like there's nothing that needs to be done, be done even if there sure. is, right? Yeah. Then when you stumble in the house, you also want to make sure that, you know, people aren't, because a cosmetic fixture is okay. Some people just are like, whoa, I don't want to do so much. And even and like it's a few to. thousand and, bucks, right? And you don't even have to because right. so we could put the carpet in inexpensive. 
Uh, we have a lot of stuff that we could put in that's not a lot of money and just give it a and little bit of And you finance too, right? Yeah, we do. We do <laughs> finance, yeah. We don't even need to really because of the fact that um, it, it's very affordable. Yeah. Uh, a little no, paint, joking, little yeah. floor, you know, yeah. <laughs> a little carpet on the floor, a vinyl or the new yeah. stuff, the LVP flooring, laminate and upgrade. And it, as you know, it makes the house sell a lot quicker 100%. for more money. We're in like the Carmel Valley area predominantly mm. and these homes that are going for a million two, a million three. And it's like a 3,500 square foot house and they mm. got three kids that they raise there with a dog and, you know, cats. And it's just like, hey, man, put a few thousand bucks in there. Because now what you're going to do is you're going to get multiple offers on the house if you price it right. If you don't, people think there's something wrong right away. Now they're looking for issues. Right. And you've got to eliminate, you know, if somebody stumbles into a house. I go show a house, you know, it doesn't look like they've maintained it. You walk in, the carpet's hammered, whatever it is. It's like, okay, now we got to check the plumbing, the electrical, the <laughs> roof, because you're already leading them down that path. Why not have a nice, bright, friendly experience? I mean, are well, you finding that? Yeah, we could do that. We could put in uh, the new stuff. You ever hear the LVP, the uh, waterproof no. flooring? Yeah. A lot of people like that because it uh, doesn't stain. It doesn't, uh, it's uh, pervious to water. Right. You can put that in, and it's not that expensive, right. and it changes the whole look of the house and gives it a whole different appearance. I love it. And as you know, when things look good, people uh, like it, and it yeah. sells quicker, and... Uh, so you, you get to. more money for it also. You got to be able to take your shoes off, man, and put your feet on a new carpet, be able to eat out the floors. You want to get into something where you don't know what's taking place. At least I don't. And, bro, <laughs> I mean, you know how that goes. There's no question about it. Uh, you know, lastly, it's like I, I heard about this stuff. Is that that what you were talking about where it looks like wood floor, but it's tile? It looks like wood, but it's vinyl, and it looks like uh, plank wood floors. Right. But uh, it, the nice thing is with wood is a lot more expensive, and you have a lot more maintenance on it. With this stuff, there's no maintenance. Scratch it proof. doesn't scratch proof, and Easy it changes clean. the whole look of the house. It really Ridiculous. does a nice with job. Ridiculous. With kids and pets, it's like a no-brainer. It's great. And, uh, it's awesome. And, okay, so Rob, I'm going to put you on the spot. Like everybody <laughs> sees carpet flooring companies that's advertising all over. Obviously, we're relationship-based people. Absolutely. That's how I do my business. That's how you do your business. And, and we perform, and, and that's why we get the referrals. But, like, you know, you hear these companies are like, oh, yeah, 50% off this weekend only. You know, this, that. I mean, what is that? It's like a catch? They, that's like, just like a, a bait and switch. They right. get in, and they don't tell you about all the hidden charges. We give all the charges up front, as you know, yeah. and uh, we don't have anything hidden. So when we give an estimate, it'll be the complete price. There's nothing they'll be charged after we're done with the job. So Love it's kind of it. nice. Awesome, bro. Thanks. That's the real deal from Mike and Terry Thank SoCal you, Flooring. You, uh, you got to look him up. You got to use him. Uh, we're going to go back to the studio now. Thanks again. Thanks, Thank Mike. You, Mark. Thank awesome. you, Mark. Thank you for your time. All right. Wow, that was great info for all of us. Thanks again to Mike from SoCal Flooring and Carpet. Let's jump right now into Sean Cahan, our buddy from Cornerstone Mortgage and Bank, and watch him drop beats the way he drops interest rates. Sean? Out amount they're getting. Are we telling them in the studio and then I'll call them later? Yeah. All right, cool. Thanks. Word on the street, the rates are low, historically very low. All right, I got this beat. What's up, you guys? It's the Mortgage Geek here, and I want to make your financing questions disappear. I'm going to make a rhyme about the reasons why, all the reasons why you should really revive. Well, I know this is exciting, and you can hardly wait, but first you'll need to check out the market update. Word on the street is rates are on the rise. Historically, they're low, so a refi might be wise. We can lower your rate or even shorten your term, so please listen to me. I promise that you'll learn. Refinancing is easy if you do it with me. Work with my team and no doubt you'll see that your options are endless and refinancing is smart. With the end of the year close, we'll help you get a head start. The value of your home is probably higher than ever. Take cash out of that bad boy. You know that it's clever. Want to sell your home? Refinance before. Use that extra cash to remodel and get more buyers in the door. You'll get a better offer and sell it on the fly. Oh my gosh, that reminds me. I haven't talked about dropping MI. If you have an FHA loan, you know MI's a drag. 
We can refi into conventional. I don't mean to brag, but I know what I'm saying. I'm the mortgage geek after all. So pick up the phone and just give me a call. Let's run through the numbers so it all makes sense. My team is here to hit it over the fence. Now that you've learned a thing or two, I hope you know refinancing is the thing to do. For more mortgage geek knowledge, I'm your man. Holla at me on Facebook. The name's Sean Cahill. Wow, that was awesome. Thanks, Sean. Let's go meet with Sean personally and talk about if you want to get into a house, we can make it happen for you. Dude, that video was amazing. Uh, We're here with Sean K. Ham, president, Cornerstone Mortgage and Bank, and AKA the Mortgage Geek. What's happening, Sean? Hey, not too much. Thanks for having me on your show. Always, Appreciate bud. It. Always doing biz, like working with you on everything. And I know you got a huge company that's going on and always appreciate that personal attention that you you know, give to myself and my team, man. Absolutely. But, but more importantly, it's like, dude, like we're experiencing so many things in this changing market and obviously you want to get a pulse on what's up and I want to hear your take. And we always talk about like, you know, people are under the impression that they can't buy a house, right? Yeah, a lot. And you know, we get that uh, a lot. And we always talk about, man, if you want to get into a house, you can get into a house. So, you know, you were talking about some of the things that were going on and some of the misconceptions that were, you know, out there that people were having and some of the competitors might be throwing out there at people, but you had some like loose programs getting people in. Like uh, what was some of the things you were telling me about earlier? I mean, we have some like 3% down, 5% down. Yeah, they have some, times they have mortgage insurance and they don't have mortgage insurance, but people need to stop being scared about mortgage insurance. Yeah. And they what need is to mortgage insurance, bro? Not to, cause like I know, but people hear it and they're, you know, sketchy on it. Yeah, they get super scared. What it is is that if a single mortgage on the the first mortgage is greater than 80% of the purchase price or the appraised value at the time of closing has to have a mortgage insurance because the bank cannot, like there's that's their risk threshold. Understood. Right? Yeah. And so all it is is another insurance piece. But see, what most people get scared of is that they don't know enough about it. Right. Um, when you don't, you're not educated on it, then you get scared of it, right? Well, um, 1998, they passed a law called the HPA, and it's the Homeowners Protection Act, which actually puts the mortgage insurance into the amortization schedule, so there is an automatic release period. It's like mortgage insurance is just such a, a trip hazard, but really what it is, it's a leg in. I mean, if you don't have the down payment, then they're going to go ahead and loan you more. You got to give them insurance on it, but you don't have the down payment. I think it always comes back to you and I saying, if you got the will, yeah, we're going to make the way. But certainly it's payment related, it's rate related. I mean, there are factors that if it's not an A paper situation that, uh, that may keep you from getting the ideal rate or what I say, not ideal, I guess, you always kick me on ideal. It's actually the available rate that, you know, based on your circumstances. Definitely. Right? And the cool thing about our mortgage bank is that we have stopped putting all what's called LLPAs, loan level pricing adjust adjustments against people with less down payment. So I'm gonna give you the same rate if you have 25% down, 20%, 5% or 3%, you have the same right. exact note rate. So we removed all like the, the risk <laughs> threshold um, for everybody. So if you put it down 3%, you're gonna get the same rate as somebody put yeah, it down so 20%. They used to go ahead and bump you up a quarter of a point or Absolutely. half a point for having less than the 20. So Correct. not only were you paying mortgage insurance, you're getting a bump up, bump on the interest rate. That's why I love working with Sean at Cornerstone Bank. I mean, you guys have the flexibility to make those things happen, right? You underwrite your own loans, yes, you're using your own money. Uh, you know, that's who I need to work with. I need to work with a decision maker, and that's who I advise my clients to work with, right? The guys that are making the decisions to get it done for you, man. Yeah, for sure. We, love. Well, we appreciate it. We always enjoy working. There's only a handful of us that, you know, are the on the owner side that still do loans, but that's I will never stop doing loans. Yeah. I love loans. I want to bring all that knowledge down all the way to the street level, and so that's why I want to The mortgage geek it, so. here, man. Thank you very much for coming in, bro, Thanks, as man. always. Yeah. And look forward to continuing doing business, man. Yeah, Absolutely. For sure. Thanks again. Once again, that was unbelievable information for all of us. And I think we can benefit from that. Thank you, Sean from Cornerstone Mortgage and Bank. Get a hold of me. I'm Mark Schwartz at TheRealDealSchwartz.com. I just want to say on behalf of me and my entire team, what a pleasure it was working with you. Oh, and by the way, thank you very much for the referral. Have a great day. That's what I'm talking about. Referral-based business, working the people you know and in the area that you live. I'm Mark Schwartz and I want to bring it all together for you. The videos that I've been putting out about selecting the right realtor, the market conditions that are going on, how to, you know, get pre-approved, you know, load your gun, be prepared for the process, compete out there, is your agent the right agent as we always discuss, is all part of making sure that you, the consumer, are being represented properly. 
In this business, there are many realtors. There are 18,500 in San Diego alone that are registered with the Board of Realtors and the Multiple Listing Service, which means that they are actually considered full-time agents, even though the majority of them have second jobs, stay-at-home parents, working spouses, etc. So I'm just trying to explain the importance of selecting the right realtor. That's one who has experience, one who's been down that road before, swung that club a thousand times, like we say, who knows the process, knows the people, has a team in place structured for your success. I'm Mark Schwartz, real estate broker, and I want to be your broker for life, looking out for your best interest. Get a hold of me. Here's my contact information. Thank you, and make it a great day. Next, exciting, we have Captain Amador from the San Diego Fire Department coming in to talk to us about fire safety and earthquake safety in the house. What to do and what you need to be prepared in case of emergency. Check this out. We are very excited to have Captain Joe Amador here with us. Captain, welcome. Thank you. Hi. As always, yep. Captain Amador specializes in educating the community on fire safety, how to be prepared, and what to have in your house and with you at all times in case of emergency. And thank you for bringing some great props here today, as always. Yeah. What do you have for us? My pleasure. Well, this is what we call a uh, be ready bag. Some people call it a safety bag, a safety kit. And it's basically, uh, you know, you can make your own, but they certainly do uh, have them available at some of the department stores. Uh, I happened to buy this one at Walmart, and basically it just has a lot of essentials. So when you bought ready. it, it had everything you needed in it already. Have you added anything to it, or you could I, just buy it this way? I have. I brought this just to show it the way it is right now, wow. but you can always uh, supplement and add That's things to awesome. It. What kind of stuff is in here? Well, we have a first aid kit, a transistor radio. We have water bottles. We have dried food. There's gloves in here, whistles, matchsticks, all the things you're going to need or can't, might need in case of emergency. A radio, like I would never even think about a transistor radio, but you need to be in touch with whoever you need to in case of emergency, right? You don't always have your phone, there might not be a signal, but Absolutely. you can always battery operate a radio, that's awesome. Uh, and then uh, matches. Yeah, matches. Absolutely, matches. for warmth and fire. Yeah, never and even the, thought about that. Well, you bring up a good point, and you know, and, and let me just tell you this, you know, we, we live in America's eighth largest, uh, eighth largest city. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have a lot of emergencies here. Uh, 1.3 million people, sure. millions of, of, of tourists that come visit every year. Yeah, San Diego, we used to visit mm -hmm. 4th of July every year. Yeah, that's right, that's right, do it. so did I. And the reason why that's important is because we as a fire department, we're an all-hazard, all-risk fire department. Yeah. We get response, uh, emergency responses to everything, anything you can think of, you know, from, uh, you know, from fires and earthquakes and, you know, uh, people floating down you know, flooded highways to yeah, anything. Yeah, I mean, of. any kind of emergency response. Right. I was gonna say, I have my own personal story, man. Like. You know, Station 24 came to my house in Del Mar. Uh, my kids were at home, and I had stepped out for 20 minutes, left a pizza box in the oven. They went to go cook. They turned it on to preheat, but they didn't open it up. That's Smoke right. started coming out. They, like, freaked out. Neighbor called 911 for them because they heard them screaming. It wasn't that hectic, and they called me, and obviously I'm running through every red light possible, <laughs> allegedly. And, uh, and I got there, and by the time I did, we pulled the box out. But it could be that yep. easy, that simple, that if it wasn't available and didn't have the opportunity to do that, then, uh, and certainly I couldn't have been there as quickly as the fire department sure. got there within two minutes. Right. It's ridiculous. And, and those things happen, the emergencies yeah. happen, you know, but that's what we're here for. And the, the big thing about the emergency bag here is, is that, uh, you know, because we have so many people in the city, it's quite possible that we may be delayed in, t in case of a sure. big emergency, a disaster, sure. an earthquake, a tsunami, that kind of thing. Yeah. So it's good to have this stuff on hand. So if you have a fire in your house, uh -huh. just grab the bag, get out, call 911. Uh, awesome. This is for a disaster. I mean, we've been seeing disasters happen nationwide, we've had fires, floods, uh, you know, these tsunamis, whatever it is. Uh, and I know we could talk about in a minute that you sure. do participate and you've worked with FEMA on emergency call, which is really amazing and awesome, man. That's what we love about you. But this is the thing that you gotta have. There's an earthquake, you're running out of the house, you gotta grab a bag prepared for anything and everything. Uh, I hear about people in fires, like trying to get back into their house, trying to get possessions. Uh, uh, what's your advice to that? I mean. Are they trying to gauge if they're going to be able to get in and out in a timely fashion? I imagine that that could be the root of a lot of issues for you. As a right. Brother. No, you know, well, we definitely advise against that. You know, never, never, ever, ever return into a burning house uh, or any type of emergency. Once you call 911, once you get out of the house and call 911, sure. find that reunion point with your family. Uh, hopefully everyone's practiced an escape plan and we can talk about all that Certainly. stuff uh, where you can go out, 
take accountability of all your all of your people, all your family, because when the fire department gets there, that's our job. We're going to find out who's there, who's missing, sure. so that we can go back and get them. But Perfect. The, at, at no time do we want anybody to return back into a house. Okay, so let's talk about that. Let's talk about a plan, right? What is the plan that you have to have with your family to be prepared? We just had a house that burned down in sure. Carmel Valley in a neighborhood next door to house and house and house. You see your neighbor's house burning, what do you do? Okay, so we talk about escape plans. People want to know what is escape plan? Well, simply put, it's exactly what it is. Um, we want people to note at least two ways out of every room in your house. Okay. That's, that's the minimum. Um, and Meaning like the front door and the window. Front door and the window. If, okay. you're, if you're trapped by fire, for example, mm -hmm. you find a way to get out if the, if, if, if the fire's sure. between you and the front door. Um, make sure you have smoke detectors. Smoke detectors save lives every year. Thousands and thousands Certainly. of lives, especially when seconds count. Smoke detectors. So you don't know how many houses I go into and sell that don't have smoke detectors. Got to have smoke detectors. Unreal. People ask me the locations on every level, mm -hmm. in every room, in every common area. Hallways, in every room, kind of every level, and every common area. That's right. Okay. Seconds count, you know, and it uh, could be literally the meaning between life and death. Understood. So escape routes is not just only for your house, but mm -hmm. a lot of people think that, uh, you know, once I have my escape route, I practice it twice a year, I'm set. No, we want you to have an escape route away from your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. uh, a few years ago, the 2003 Cedar Fire, 2007 Witch Fire over in these areas yes. uh, affected a lot of people because quite naturally people are so accustomed to getting to and from work or whatever they have to go sure. one way in, one way out through their neighborhood. Got to have a uh, backup plan. Got to have a backup plan. In case of emergency, you have fire engines, you have down trees, you have flames from the fire front itself yeah. that's going to be blocking the way. Let's find a different route to get out of our neighborhood because that it could also be the means between life and death. Yeah. Uh, before we get to FEMA, one last thing, and thank you very much. You got to have this by the front door, by mm -hmm. the garage. So you're walking out, you grab your bag, and you got everything you need. Uh, we're in an area where, you know, chaparral, dry areas, canyons are prevalent. Those areas, you know, chaparral is protected. You can't take it down, right? But it That's dries right. out. It's like you throw a match on it, you're burning down houses. I mean, what can we do if, say, my house is up on a canyon. Insurance right. is tough to get. We know that. Right. But what can we do to protect our house from that? I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because one of the main things we, we preach all the time is people live in target hazard areas and anywhere sure. is prepare yourself, prepare your home, fire hard in your home. What, it, what um, simply that what that means is just make sure you create a defensible space around your home, around the perimeter of your home. Sure. Use uh, you know water tolerant plants uh, and, and clear at least we recommend a minimum below, no, a minimum of 100 feet away from your home. You know that way when you know fire does approach, you give the fire department a fighting chance to save your home. We lost a lot of homes in those fires, right. and uh, a lot of them were just not uh, not very well prepared. So that defensible space, keep those combustibles away from your roof lines, from your patios. Even patio furniture wow. sometimes can become torches. I can imagine so. in uh, with embers flying and all yeah. the things that people have in their yards, toys, tables, chairs, you know, uh, canopies, etc. Sure. It goes up in seconds. Sure. Well, that's great information. I want to thank you again for coming in and talk about that. And let's try and help the firemen. Let, let's make sure that our house is prepared so that we have that border in between like we've discussed. So we have that barrier so you're not going to just go up in flames. So you have water, water type plants and sure. surrounding the area, etc. So let's just jump into, give me a story. I, I know mm -hmm. we were blessed to have you go with FEMA right. to Irma, right, in Florida. Right. And so let's hear a story or two, what, a success story <laughs> about what you did and saving people and getting them back out. You know, I've, I've been doing this for uh, almost 24 years. Mm. And, um, you know, we do this for um, a lot of the good things that come out of it. You know, people say, what is your craziest story? And there's, they, <laughs> they're expecting, you know, murder, mayhem, blood, and sure. stuff like that. And I, and I really, a lot of firefighters, we don't keep that in mind. We try to forget about that. Yeah. So, but the things that really come in mind are the things that matter mm -hmm. when people come up to us and thank us. And from the bottom of my heart, you can tell when people are genuine and say, thank you for being Certainly. here. So Irma, um, I have the opportunity and the honor of responding on the FEMA team. We have, wow. we have I'm part of a FEMA, FEMA team uh, here in San Diego, California Task Force 8. Uh, there's only eight teams in California, 28 teams national. Sure. One of the teams went to Florida and I was a part of it. Uh, we didn't see a lot, as you think, people floating down there because there were so many people that converged on the area to help. Certainly. We were, we were staged on the northern part. However, we did still get hit by the storm <laughs> and we did um, work alongside a lot of people. Two of the people that we worked alongside from another team happened. They n were near miss. They got sucked wow. under. They were searching for bodies or people that were trapped in some of these houses that were flooded. And they happened to walk in an area that was culvert. Um, if you know anything about water, you know, water it may not always tell you what, sure. what's happening underneath, underneath the surface. Though, yeah. They walked in, got sucked into a culvert, and came out the other end. Got to be so careful. And, uh, yeah, and it, they had their flotation devices. Luckily, they ripped them off. If they wouldn't, they would have been stuck there. And so all that happens, and it happened in front of everybody, wow. including the public. And I think it just gave a good, uh, clear picture of what, how dangerous this, these floods are. So be prepared. 
uh, no matter what disaster is, look it up. Go to you know San Diego.gov and uh, go to go to the fire Great page. Info. You'll see a lot of good safety tips there. Well, I appreciate it. We are blessed to have firemen working every day for us to protect us. What a great story to go out there and work with FEMA, man. They definitely needed the help. Got to be ready for a fire or an emergency. Get that bag. Go to the realdealschwartz.com. That's realdealschwartz.com. Get all the information about getting what you need to be prepared. Thank you very much again, Captain. My pleasure. As always, it was great. I want to thank all our guests tonight for coming in. We had Mike from SoCal Flooring and Carpet, our buddy Sean Cahan from Cornerstone Mortgage and Bank, and Captain Joe Amador from the San Diego Fire Department to come in and educate us. Thanks to everyone. As usual, we're going to transition out with a local aspiring musician. Tonight we have a video and song from the Illuminati Hotties. Check this out, and we look forward to seeing you next week. I'm Mark Schwartz, and this is The Real Deal.